Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast, featuring dream accelerating inspiration. I'm Jeff Meyer, your host, author, entrepreneur, and coach. My goal with this podcast is to help you identify and clarify your own dream by taking wisdom from others' successes and challenges. If you're looking to take action on your dream, to make a difference doing something you love, but your fears are holding you back, then this podcast is for you. If you're interested in finding additional support, you can also check out my Dream Accelerator coaching program designed to help realize your full potential and reshape your future. As always, you can learn more about my Dream Accelerator program at jeffmeyer.org. Using my Dream Accelerating formula, heart-centered entrepreneurs can focus on their dream, name their fears, change their mindset, define their next, and move forward anyway. Welcome back, fellow successful dreamers, to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast. We are so excited today uh, to have Nick Curran with us from N4N, and we'll get into what N4N is in just a little bit a dream that he has launched and uh, successfully uh, continued and grown through the years. And so, Nick, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your insights and your experience with our audience. And uh, I pray that it'll be encouraging for people today as they listen in. Why don't you take a moment to just introduce yourself, Nick? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, My name is Nick Kern. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Numbers for Nonprofits. As the name suggests, we help uh, nonprofits with all things numbers. Uh, Our tagline is managing money with mission. And we we really uh, live that tagline. Um, I am a father of three. Um, I'm a husband. Uh, I am a wannabe triathlete. (laughs) <laughs> I talk about moving forward anyway, right? <laughs> I um we stay busy. Um we're a swim family, um soccer family, baseball family, really really always moving <laughs> and moving forward. Um this thing started um when I had a former boss of mine call me and say, "Hey, I'm on a board of a nonprofit. I can't get good financials." on a timely, reliable basis. Mm. Um, let's see what you can maybe do and go in and help them. And, you know, that was in 2006. And from there, uh, it snowballed. You know, this is a small town in some regards, and you do good work and good word spreads. And, um, you know, the next thing I'm working with, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Dane County, Colonial Club, a um, few others. And right now we're a uh, servicing about 80 clients, primarily in Dane County, Wisconsin, uh, a few in Milwaukee area, and then there's a few scattered throughout the country as well. Uh, We're a team of 14 as of this moment. Uh, We'll have 15 by the end of October. And then as I was discussing with you prior to hopping on here, you know, we we should have one more before the end of the year. And then we'll be that one ahead that I'm hoping for. Um, Yeah, I think that that covers it. So that that invitation to the boardroom um, to help that friend, how did how did that spark you launching a new a new venture here? Yeah. So what, what exactly doing, got stirred in you in that moment? Well, you know, I, I mean, to be honest, it was just trying something new. Um, I was all of 29 years old when I got that invitation. And to be honest with you, Jeff, it was a little bit of fake it till you make it. I knew QuickBooks, I knew nonprofits through my audit background. Um, But, you know, me going in and starting to act as this, you know, supervisor, if you will, of the entire finances of an organization, that was a little bit foreign to me. But, you know, what, for me, what it was, is I didn't have a fear of failure, because I knew that if I did somehow stumble, I would be able to still go back and do whatever work I had been doing, which was like small business bookkeeping, taxes. Even if my business at the time failed, I knew that I could go back to an accounting firm and probably have experiences that none of my colleagues would have had running a business. You know, all of us primarily, you know, went to school, got our accounting degree, got our CPA, and then moved on. I was always like, you know what, I'm going to have these experiences of running an accounting firm that 
that will always be with me. Hmm. So I guess to start, it was, you know, a lack of fear of failure. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that was sparking me. And then, you know, as, as, as you become successful, that's a, that's a real fire. You know, when you're feeling good about the services that you're providing others, really acting as an expert, as nonprofits navigate their finances to continue the good work that they do on a regular basis, you know, that's really what drives me. And, you know, we've been successful at doing that. We've had bumps in the road where maybe we've stretched ourselves and, um, you know, took on work maybe we shouldn't have for a variety of different reasons. Uh, we've had times where, you know, staffing was a little bit um, unbalanced compared to the capacity we needed at the time. And then that led to stress that led to, you know, not ideal situations, but, you know, we've continued on. We, I love, you know, just the title of your podcast moving forward. We keep moving. I, I'm always accused of saying we're going to push through, you know, yeah. and, and that's, that's a real thing. That's a real um, mm. characteristic that a leader in my shoes has to have. Um, there are definitely days where, you know, you know, especially through COVID, I, I, you know, we might as well just give this a little bit of context. These last 18 months have been, uh, can I say it? Hell. <laughs> um, yeah. They just, you know, have really challenged a lot of people on a lot of different ways. And there have been weeks where, you know, I've really had my own struggles with being the head of an organization while trying to help manage the expectations of 13, 14 other people. Um, but at the end of the day, I get up, I get just, just get started. I, you know, say, Hey, I'm going to do today. I, even though it might not be the best I'm feeling, I'm going to do the best I can today. Yeah. And I, it's amazing how many days I can get through just thinking that. And, you know, there's probably still been one or two of those days that ended up with it being a complete, uh, <laughs> you know, completely off day and yeah. maybe bad things have happened, but you know, that still lives, leaves 363 days of, you know, this is probably going to be okay. Yeah. I, there's so much you said in that, um, right there. I want to, I want to go back and ask or just point out, um, you started this venture, not totally an expert in your field, doing what you're doing now. You started as a willing learner who was willing to roll up your sleeves and learn some things to improve yourself and you knew you would improve yourself. So that's, that's where the failure, not failure comes in is because you, you can't fail when, when you just get more information on the table that helps improve you and your skill set. So I would just encourage you, if you're listening to this, um, you might have a passion or an opportunity like is presented to you that you don't know all the answers to. By the way, most entrepreneurs don't know all the answers to. <laughs> we grow into it. Um, but you are willing to step out because you're a lifelong learner. You can learn these things. You can bring people along you that can help you. And now you have launched this new venture. So don't wait until you got it all figured out, I guess is what I'm trying to say to people. You can yeah. launch your dream before you got it all figured out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, you know, the mistakes are just part of what everybody has to go through to get yep. through life. You know, if we could only think of mistakes as um, not just as a negative and rather as just one more part of life, I think that mm-hmm. would make so many people, um, you know, take that leap of faith and, and, and try things more. You know, some of us just aren't engineered that way though. You know, I, I work with a lot of accountants, accountants, generally speaking, are very yeah. risk averse. Yes. So yes. I'm a little bit of an anomaly on that front. Um, but there are some within my team who, you know, are those people who, learn as they go, as they, you know, make a few mistakes that, you know, aren't detrimental to anything client-wise. You know, I often joke that nobody's died from an accounting mistake, right? (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, so why not like talk with the clients, learn from the situation, you know, hopefully we're training along the way as well so that, you know, they're not completely blind in the headlights, if you will. But, you know, those, that learning along the way, Everybody has to have it. Yeah, I love that. Um, 
we talk in the Dream Accelerator a lot about uh, helping those dreamers that are launching their dreams to figure out who their who is. Um, who are the who that they're serving? You might call it a ideal client um, or your 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 client audience, the people you're attracting. And um, usually with a dream in an entrepreneurial venture like yours, um, there is a gap or there is a problem that is presented to you that you know you can solve or you can solve better than someone else is solving. What's the problem that N4N solves in the marketplace. Yeah, that's a softball, Jeff. I appreciate the easy question there. So, <laughs> you know, what, what we found quickly was that nonprofits, because of tight budgets, tend to attract a lower qualified finance person. And oftentimes they were just, you know, through, through no fault of their own, just not quite getting it all. And we would come in and find, you know, what was being done wrong and, offer to our clients, you know, pricing that was a, you know, probably saving them money from a full-time or a part-time bookkeeper while also giving them a higher quality product, better information to make decisions, uh, more timely and accurate. So it, mm -hmm. it was, it was, you know, pretty straightforward once we started seeing this need. And then you add on top of that, that, you know, Dane County alone is, you know, has the most nonprofits per capita, I think, in the country, depending on what statistic you use. Uh, so, you know, the opportunity in just the area I'm living in is ripe. And then, you know, now with technology and everybody seeing that you can do a lot of things remote through yeah. COVID, you know, the opportunities are beyond Wisconsin and Dane County at this point. So, you know, we're taught, we've talked with people in New York and California and all across the country now at, with, as possibilities for, for help. So that, 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 you know, it's, it's been easy to find opportunities for us because there is such a need uh, to help nonprofits manage money with mission. Now, you mentioned uh, word of mouth a lot. We just had an episode or our coaching huddle last night for the Dream Accelerator. We were talking about um, engaging engaging the market before the people are a client. You have, you have been successful to get to your 80 nonprofits that you're serving um, through word of mouth. What other things have you done besides word of mouth to engage people add value so that they could potentially become clients? So we do a breakfast with benefits series. So, you know, I've over time just aggregated up a, a lot of nonprofit emails and, you know, found, found mailing lists and what have you. And so we offer that as something as an outreach into the community. Um, I'm a donor in the community. I think that speaks to why, you know, why mm. we do the work that we do and in my investment in the community. Um, continually networking through Rotary, um, organizations like Downtown Madison, uh, Greater Chamber, you know, just getting out there and talking with people. I've also read, you know, and believe that, you know, if you're just out helping others get to their dreams, yeah. that that will come back on you. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer in that, you know, I, I'll take, you know, it's been a little bit tough uh, of late taking just rant the quote unquote random meetings to meet people. But, you know, as often as I can, I'm meeting with people who, you know, want to learn more about nonprofits, uh, want to serve nonprofits, want to be on a board of a nonprofit. I just last week um, had a board member uh, that I recruited to one of my clients and he was just like, Nick, I really actually appreciate, you know, mm. not every board position position is, is a, a it's, they can be thankless jobs, right? But yes. this guy was saying, hey, I've really appreciated. I'm getting a lot out of this. Thank you for making the connection. So oh. just making those connections in the community is, is a way that I think N for N, you know, spreads the word and, 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 you know, gets our name out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, the last 18 months have been rough for all of us with the, uh, with COVID and, um, it's going to be that way for the foreseeable future. You know, it's, and in some respects, we're not ever going back to what was before. Can you talk a little bit about some of the specific challenges and obstacles that you have faced over the last couple of years? And, and 
even more importantly than the obstacles themselves, how did that impact you? And if you can be vulnerable and honest, I mean, it's hard. Um, I, I would, I would say the biggest challenge, Jeff, was being a leader. Like leaders can sometimes feel like they're on an island. And yep. so yep. It can be lonely. You're helping 13, 14 people, um, maybe some vendors, client, 80 clients as well. And those people, who's helping you, right? And right. so this would be a, an important time to acknowledge, you know, that I, I did have a pretty good support structure through it all. I mean, first and foremost, of course, my wife. Um, you know, then I had a group of guys, uh, we would meet over, uh, at a restaurant in Verona outdoors through the summer. And, you know, there might've been a few, uh, beverages involved, but we, uh, <laughs> talked about life and business and, and how, how to just kind of get through it, to push through, move forward. Yeah. Um, you know, so having that, um, I brought on an HR consultant to help me with an area of my business that I'm probably not the strongest in mm. uh, as far as managing people and checking in on them regularly and that. Um, and she's been a godsend to our, our group. Um, and I really think has put us on a path for success beyond COVID. Uh, so that's been an, ex, you know, an ex, that was a challenge for me, managing people through through the um, pandemic. So I found a, a great solution. And I think, you know, after the dust settled a little bit, you know, the things that I hadn't gotten ahead of still had to play out, but then mark that line in the sand, maybe, uh, you know, our, yep. the start of our, our 21 year here now, I feel like we've really come a long way, putting the right people on the bus, um, really being thorough with, our, our vetting of employees and finding the right team members. And, and here we go. And I'm really optimistic about, you know, finding that one ahead higher yet. And then um, going yeah. into next year, really feeling like everybody's in a good place. Yeah. So wherever you're at in this um, dream pursuit, as you're listening, if you're starting up or if you're scaling up, you know, um, eventually, if you pursue your dream, there's going to be management of people and there's going to be leading the venture. There's going to be leading the organization in alignment with values and, and towards your vision. And that's really difficult work. And sometimes it's hard for an entrepreneur who is always thinking out ahead to be mindful of the, the present and caring for people. I, I struggle with that somewhat too. Because I'm always marching ahead. I'm always probably 100 yards ahead of everybody else. And sometimes I leave people behind when I do that. So I love what Nick said. I want you to really pay attention to that. He recognized through some hardship, he recognized where he could improve. And he went and asked for help. He went and brought someone on his team in the in a form of a vendor, a, some, a supporter, to come in and do some HR recommendations. You need to understand as an entrepreneur, you are not going to have all the gifts that are necessary to drive your thing forward, whatever it is. You need to ask others to help you. And there are plenty of resources to do that. So um, kudos to you, Nick, for being courageous enough to ask for help and to go get it. And that's one of the ways we move forward anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. On top uh, of that, you know, I had to learn to listen a little bit better. You know, I, the reason our leadership team right now is so cohesive. Uh, it wasn't always that way. I mm -hmm. was, you know, given some feedback that, hey, Nick, you've got to listen to us a little bit more. Where are your men and women in the trenches, if you will? Yeah, you know, We know what's going on. We've got the pulse of your other people. Start listening to us. Mm. And, you know, I'm not going to say I'm 100% good at this yet, but I bet you I'm 80%, which is up You've seen some improvement. That's 30 good. to 40%, um, you know, pre pandemic. And that's, you know, something that, again, you have to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to, you know, not try, try not to take it personal. I, I still struggle with that. You know, yeah. you're not, it's not a personal attack on you if somebody says, hey, Nick, you know, can you slow down on this? Can you, can you claw back on this? Do you realize when you're saying yes to this, you're saying no to that? Um, hmm. really hearing those <laughs> feedbacks and, you know, the, you know, through the pandemic, we had some exits of, of people and 
we did exit interviews with the HR consultant. There was some learning opportunities there on, you know, being a little bit more mindful of, of, of the people of what we're doing with clients, maybe not taking on as much as we, we do, we do or did at times. Um, so that's an, that's an important piece of advice. I guess I can give people too is try, try to listen to your people. Yeah. And then be willing to do what it takes to improve and, there's like there's this fine line also, isn't there, Nick, between uh, growing and expanding the business and and maintaining and caring for the current clients and also your team, right? Definitely, I um, I think I was I know I was growth focused, uh, and we have we've had some tremendous awesome growth years. I'll tell you what, I am going to be as happy as I've ever been if our 2021 is a flat year (laughs) and we have achieved all of this internal um, positivity, uh, stability, stability, happier clients, um, you know, and then I hope that's the base for the relaunch, if you will, of, you know, some controlled growth going forward. Um, I just read a book, uh, no man's land, um, you know, and it talks about this tough time where you're, there's 15 to 20 people and you maybe lost your focus from when you first started out. It was just you. You were taking on those first clients. Yep. Uh, Rich Fromotter was bringing you into a church that you'd never heard of. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, then you then, then you just keep saying yes. You keep saying yes. You keep saying yes. And then, oh, no, I've just hit a wall. I yep. shouldn't have said yes to these. I should have stayed in my lane. And, and, and the book just talks about a couple different things. And, and I, I, it was such a timely read. I, I actually got to digest it all. I happened to be on vacation and got this perfectly recommended book at the right time for my business. Nice. Um, and, and, and again, yeah, so that with the timing of our management team gelling together, feeling good about how we end up 2021. And then that being a launching pad for 22 with a, you know, a refocus on how we do this work well. Yeah. The book's called No Man's Land. Yep. And who's the author? Doug Tatum. It's right over here still on my desk. I'm looking. Doug, <laughs> Doug Tatum. Yeah, cool. It's, it's, I'll it's, have to check that out. It says what to do when your company's too big to be small and too small to be big. There you go. You're right in that mix. Yep. Yep. Great subtitle, by the way, for you authors who are listening in. <laughs> Great subtitle. Wow. Um, so right now you keep using this phrase. I want to, I just want to check in on that because it'll be a learning for me. You're one, you're one up higher. You're one ahead. What's the phrase you use? A one ahead? Yeah, get, getting one ahead. Um, you know, it, so, so be staffed for growth. Yeah. You know, I, I, my sense is the, our, our industry, the accounting world, um, we're typically hiring behind, get, you know, we get the work and then we go find the people. Yeah. Um, and, and I've been guilty of that as well over these 15 or so years now that I've been doing nonprofit accounting and um, through a variety of reasons, I feel like I can get one ahead now. I've got capital that I can use. I've got lines of credit that I can manage. Um, I'm really particular with my projecting, you know, now I'm getting a little wonky with my accounting world, but, you know, I know my numbers and by getting one ahead, I know that I can afford all of that. I can afford my, my own take home for the life that I want to live. Um, and that is going to create, again, all this positivity internally with people and equity and, um, making sure that nobody is feeling overwhelmed um, at any given point. And then yeah. having that flexibility internally is going to be an asset going forward. I'm, I'm convinced of it. My team is convinced of it. So that's, that's been getting to that point. My HR consultant. Yeah. She knows it as well. So it's been yeah. very well articulated internally that that's where we're getting. Right. I, I think that at early stages of an entrepreneurial venture too, there are times when, you're hiring before you're ready. I'm experiencing that with the Dream Accelerator. I have, I have hired uh, some admin help before I'm ready because I know 
that if I don't, I'm never going to get ahead because I'm going to be spinning my wheels, doing all of the admin stuff and not doing what I'm gifted to do. And it's a little, it's a little tense moment provoking for me because I feel like, oh my gosh, if this doesn't work, like I think it's going to work, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose money. Um, I'm not going to get ahead. And what would you say to people who are in that spot? Like, they, they're they're, they're going to wait until they can, and they should probably not wait until they can. Yeah, that, that one's a tough one, Jeff, because, you know, I'm, I'm somebody, again, I'm, I'm a little bit risk averse because I'm an accountant, but I'm an, also a marketing major. So I've, <laughs> I'm a dreamer, I guess, on yep. some levels. Yep. I call it calculated risk. I, again, I know my numbers. And, and so this will be completely biased, but those entrepreneurs better have a handle on their numbers and they better have, if it's not them, they better, as we were talking earlier, they better find that support person or people that can do that for them to run projections, to look at, hey, if you start hiring somebody now and that's going to cost you $2,000 a week, by here, you better have this much revenue coming in in order to pay that back, yep. uh, that line of credit, that credit card, that loan from mom and dad, you know, whatever it's going to be, you better understand all of that and how it's, it's, it's going to play out. Um, but your, your, your sentiment is right on that, you know, there's going to be these moments where you're going to have to go, oh, crap, I don't feel comfortable with this financially, and, but I'm going to do it. But you, you should understand the picture because the last yep. thing I want people to do is dig themselves a hole that they can't get out of, right? Yep. I yep. do not want to recommend that. I've, yeah. I've seen when I was doing small business bookkeeping and taxes, I've seen people who started a business because they thought they could do it better than their boss. And, you know, at the end of the day, they would have been better off and not disparaging anybody, but, you know, they flipping the proverbial flipping burgers, you know, they could have been making 10, 12 bucks an hour and be money ahead because they were losing money in their business and they didn't yeah. know how to run that business. So. I, you know, a little bit long winded there, but I, I'd say, you know, you got to be calculated with it. Uh, you got to yeah. know where you're going to go. But yes, being aware of when those situations are, are present, is going to be something that a successful entrepreneur is going to have to embrace and decide where to go with it. And calculated risks not only know, not only takes into account the numbers, it also, you, you, sh you better have a plan. I mean, you better, you better know what you're doing to grow. You can't just do that without a plan, right. without a, a map forward. Um, and of course the plan has to be adjustable and moldable because things happen and change. And yes. like, I mean, we did our last in-person dream accelerator a month before the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And that was my plan was these in-person workshops and all of a sudden March hit. And I'm like, so, does the dream accelerator still exist or does it just go away now because COVID hit? So I had to totally reshape how I deliver the product, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we can't keep, we can't be in person for probably a year and a half, maybe two, maybe three years. So now what? So you have a plan, but you've also got to be able to adjust to the, cl the climate that's in front of you too. So absolutely, that's, that's awesome input. Um, I want to, I want to change change lanes just a bit here because I know your passion to uh, want to be a triathlete and that you've already gone on that road and you've already had some experiences in uh, biking and running and swimming and, and all that. And that's been a really interesting journey for you. Um, I want you to connect the two. I want you to connect for me your passion to do that and how you've gone after that and the N4N dream becoming a reality. What have you learned? It could go either way. So what have you learned from going after the triathlete thing that has helped you in business? And what have you learned from the business venture that has helped you with the triathlete journey? Oh my gosh. I feel like my head's swirling with so many possibilities. So we'll just, we'll just get yeah, it go just, here. Just All right. So, yeah. um, I think it's important to talk about the history of why I started doing triathlons, yeah. which was that I had two small heart attacks uh, about four years ago now. Um, and, you know, I, I do have to say that as an entrepreneur, we all need to take care of ourselves. And I obviously wasn't doing that on some level, right? Yeah. So important to recognize, to emphasize yeah. to people that, you know, 
you got to take care of everything that tripod or whatever stool you want to sit on you know if you don't have your physical your spiritual your mental all in in order that tripod's going to fall over and mine did yeah so six months of cardiac rehab and then i'm like you know what i'm going to try a triathlon and i most people said well why don't you try a sprint distance well i went wrongly or rightly to an Olympic distance, which was a little longer. <laughs> you just went for the um, old ball of wax. <laughs> yeah. I, um, wasn't a strong swimmer. I, you know, so back to the whole, um, you know, earlier, you know, you just got to get going and try mm. and learn, you know, I, I probably side stroked more than half of my first swim in the triathlon. And then thereafter I, be, you know, <gasps> took some classes, if you will, or, or, or had some morning swim classes with a, a coaching place in town. Uh, the biking was pretty, you know, I, I felt like I was going to be okay there. And then running is just, you know, getting the, getting the distance in, right. Doing the yeah. training. So blocking time for that stuff. That's important. That's what got me to be able to do the things that I did on the, as a triathlete. So, you know, I would, I, I literally schedule my, you know, swim classes, my, if I'm training for a marathon, I literally put those four or five days a week, um, four hours at a time, sometimes of, you know, the 20 mile runs that you have to do on weekends, lock those off, communicate that with your significant other, get them on the same page. Cause that's important too. Um, so I guess the, t- the tie in there is like, if something's important to you, if you're really shooting toward a goal, you've really got to set aside specific time in order to achieve that. I would actually say like right now, I probably have to do a little bit better job of blocking out time to run my business. You know, mm. I'm a little bit heavy client focused right now. Um, as uh, through the 18 months, the, the, the turmoil that we've kind of alluded to, you know, in getting people on the right, re- getting the right people on the bus. So I'm a little bit client heavy right now and I'm working in my business and not at my business. Yeah. So yeah. Something to be conscious of there. Um, and, and, you know, I've read books and been on, you know, had seminars where they say you've got to block that time for yourself. um, And, you know, think about your business, think about how you're running it, not just doing the work that you know, needs to be done for your clients. Yeah. So hope that gave some tie in between the two. Yeah, I just I was taking some notes, I, I blocking time. Like, and you talked about how important health is. And relational health and family health and all of that. And what I find with a lot of the people I'm working with is we kind of assume that we're going to have that time. And I keep encouraging them, no, you need to schedule the time. You need to block the time with your date night with your wife. You need to block the time with your stu- your your children's activities and just being present at night with them. You need to block time to work on your business, not just in your business or at your business. Um, And then the other thing you said was family support. Um, You can't, you can't pursue these things without being in alignment with if you're married with your spouse or your kids. And what's even greater is when you can find ways to include them in your venture, right? Mm -hmm. How can they participate with you? Now you're a swim family and um, so you're enjoying swimming together, right? And right. Uh, your wife is part of the team uh, for N4N. Yes. Yep. Um, the other thing I think of when I see your posts on running and um, frequently you post, and I, I don't like, I don't want to be that guy that's always bragging about how far I ran or whatever, but yours always are, <clears throat> it, was a, it was a hard day. I sludged through it but I did it. I, I, those posts really, re- that's not all you post, but those ones really resonate with me because it's showing me that the other lesson to be learned is it takes discipline. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I, I'm not ever posting on Facebook to be braggy. Um, I've actually heard from too many people that when I do post, it's actually inspiring for them. So that yes. drives me to post when I yep. do run. And, and I have to be real because, you know, like right now, this week, for instance, I'm not running. My back is, I fell off my bike two months ago. It's been a, a painful mm. road back. I'm getting um, pain management um, 
this week. And, you know, I hope to be back running pretty regularly here by late, you know, middle October, late October, you know, I, I'm swimming instead. I'm doing less, uh, imp, uh, less impact sort of things to yeah. I'm stretching, I'm doing things to get back to where I want to be, but it is, it's hard um, to, you know, take that pounding on your body day in, day out. Um, and so you need to be mindful of a couple of things. I get, you know, being trim, number one, you know, I've been running and biking at a little heavier weight this year than I have in the past. So that's, I think, taking a toll on my body. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the point, the correlation there to business is, you know, keep things lean and trim. And yeah, yeah, that's right. That's good. <laughs> on your business. I feel, well. a, I feel, a, I feel a book coming on here, brother. Oh gosh. <laughs> I, I don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel the same Jeff. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yes. Um, you know, I'm just repeating things that all of us have already heard, right? You yeah. know, that's just, you know, and we need that. We need that repetition. We need to hear from people. And um, uh, I, that's why I'm trying to be real when I do that kind of posting, you know, because yeah. I am I am certainly not perfect. I am um, absolutely uh, faulty in, in a lot of things. Um, and yet, you know, here I am, relatively successful business owner. Um, somewhat of a triathlete. I still, I still got one big goal that will, I think will qualify me as an official triathlete. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to keep it real and yeah, let people know that it's, it, you know, it takes all kinds to get a business up and running. It takes, uh, you're going to have different days every day. Uh, yeah. And, and you just have to keep moving forward. And, and keep in mind your who, you know, I think of you, I'm sure there are days when, um, when it's, when you're tempted to want to quit, you're like, what, this is too hard that you think of, or somebody reminds you of one of the 80 clients and how you help them do their, do their mission. And you've been a part of that team to make that mission happen. And because of that, the world's a better place because that organization is functioning more in a more healthy way um, and with more competence around the finances, better stewardship, uh, gaining more trust with their people that they're helping because they're, they're managing stuff better. So you're helping people. And that's, that's the power that keeps me going is thinking about the people I help. Um, so I'm sure you have these success stories um, littering your landscape that you help your team remember, okay, it's really hard right now, but remember, this is why we do this. This is who we're helping. No, I, I think it's a good reminder, Jeff, you know, I was expecting to take something away from you today too. And I think that's it. I think I have to continually remember who the who is, you know, it's the client work that we do. It's my yep. team. Um, it's my family yep. that I support through the work that I do. Yep. Um, it's my network around me in this community i'm very fortunate you know the web the web around me has been supportive from day one uh, yeah and I, you know when there are those tough days and there have been tough days i i need to i do i do go and find you know that one that neighbor that i want to talk to just mm -hmm. to catch up and, and talk you know maybe not talk shop just talk about life how are they doing how are they feeling mm -hmm. you know mental health has been a huge topic through this pandemic and and we should acknowledge that, you know, yeah. never was I going to do anything um, d drastic, but you know, the, it, this was one of the hardest times of my life. Yeah. And um, I was very fortunate to have people who I could stop and talk to about what was going on, whether it was other business colleagues or neighbors and friends or family. That's awesome. So uh, to our to our listeners um, today, I want to give Nick an opportunity to speak directly to you. Um, you're sitting out here listening to this episode, and you're you've got a dream, you've got something that is sparked in your heart that you want to do to better the world, and you know you're providing a solution where there's a gap or a, a problem that needs to be solved, and you've got you've got an answer that you think you can provide. Um, what? What do you want to say to them, Nick, um, to coach them? This sounds so heavy, Jeff. <laughs> um, we've talked a lot. We've, we've said 
most everything. And I just, I think I want to reiterate what we've already talked about. Yeah. And for me as an accountant, I, I guess I'm going to always talk about being prepared, knowing your numbers, spend some time with that. If Again, if you don't, if that's not your expertise, if you're a marketer, if you're a dreamer and you don't want to think about numbers, make sure you have that support structure in place behind you. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't want anybody to dig a hole while they're, they're yeah. going after their dream. Uh, you yeah. know, I just, that's a little bit of the practical side of me that I just yeah. want, don't want us to lose track of. I've seen w- too many, too many people, too many stories where that dream just t- consumes and, f- and, and, f- and fails and not in, a, in any, any good way. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the good things that might go wrong, you know, the, that might come up the mistakes, you know, embrace those mistakes, learn from those mistakes. Mm. Um, you know, for, for me, it was, you know, knowing that I needed somebody to help with people management, knowing that I needed to listen to my team better um, and moving forward from there. Uh, That's awesome. Take care of your, yourself, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah. You're going to need to, um, you know, physically, you know, whether, whatever it is, if it's yoga, if it's swimming, if it's stretching, if it's, um, you know, uh, rec sports, whatever it might be, just find some time for yourself to, to stay, stay fit, eat right, you know, yeah. get your sleep, <laughs> you know, those, this all sounds very cliche and I'm also still guilty of, of failing on these fronts as well, but you know, the better you can get that into your routine everything's going to flow better. Everything's yeah. going to flow better. Yeah. Don't destroy your life in pursuit of your dream. That's not helpful nope. because your dream needs you and the world needs you, not just your dream. Um, so uh, don't kill yourself in the process. <laughs> too many people, literally. too many people need you. So yeah. that's, that's really good, really good encouragement. Brother, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate the time you blocked out <laughs> there today to talk with me and bless others on your journey. Um, in closing, uh, how can people find out more about N4N and the work, the great work you're doing in our community and beyond? Sure. So our website is uh, numbers for nonprofits. You've got to spell out numbers, the number four nonprofits, plural.com. You can see our team, our clients, our testimonials, the services we provide. Um, you know, we're on social media. We're, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, so in, Instagram, awesome. Facebook, that sort of thing. Uh, you can give me a, my numbers on the on the website, so you can give me a call and schedule time to sit down with me and talk with me. Uh, I would love to hear you know your story and how we might be able to help. Um, yeah, that's that's how that's, you can find me. That's awesome. And uh, before we jump off, I would just say um, I hope your back gets healed up so you can go do the thing you love to do. I know how important that is to you and your health and, uh, rich blessings and rich blessings to your entire family and your household. Um, uh, as a key member of our community, um, I want you to be healthy and your household to thrive. So, um, that's my prayer for you, brother. And I thank you for the time today very much. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate being invited. And uh, to all the listeners out there, um, thanks for hearing my story. You bet. Hey, fellow dreamer. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, jeffmeyer.org, for all of the show notes and links. And when you're ready to move from overthinking about your dream to actually taking action on it, consider joining the Dream Accelerator community. Our clients are getting crystal clear on their dream with our Dream Generator Vivid Description 5-Step Process. They're discovering the truth about fear and how to use it as fuel to take courageous steps in the right direction. And most importantly, they are walking a clear path forward because they have made an investment in themselves to confidently realize their dreams. The results are so inspiring. Having coaching and companions on the dream journey is crucial. Remember, fear will come, fear will stay. Move forward anyway.